I love Africa Global Radio. Here we go now for good news across Africa. And Epifania would be speaking to an accountant who is also into agriculture. And yeah, it's all about celebrating women who are actually achieving excellence, doing remarkable things on the continent of Africa and, of course, beyond. So Epifania would be taking over as uh, Madam Nkechi Akunyili is live with us right now. Epi, over to you. Hold on, hold on. Okay, go now. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Barry. Yeah, you can Barry. go now. Sorry. I think uh, for this for this month, we've actually been talking to women and looking at their achievements yeah. and celebrating them and their impact. So Absolutely. it's another same guys that we're actually speaking to, uh, Madame Inkechi Akunyili, and she happens to be a banker who is also into agriculture, and we currently Super. have her on the line. So, mm. hello, Inkechi. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are good you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Okay, well, you're welcome to the Africa Daily Show. I mean, we're super excited to have you join us today on the show. And trust me, we can't wait to hear the amazing stories you share with us on the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here too. <laughs> That's good to hear. So, first off, I when I when I actually realized you're a banker and you're into agriculture, I was just thinking, wow, combining those two is not is not easy. So, what actually motivated you to get into banking and agriculture? Okay, um, I, I'm not doing both of them um, time actually, but um, I'm just covering the gap. So I'll get to that. Yes. Okay, so um, my history is really. Um, banking, the employee is experienced in the banking industry. Mm -hmm. I actually left my last um, bank on um, December 2019. Okay. And um, it was just, um, so what did I do in banking? Mm -hmm. I think, um, why did I go into banking in the first place? Yes. In the 90s, in the mid 90s when I graduated, I studied economics in school actually. And um, when I graduated, I, I, I can. I would just say that banking was late. You know, it was just the profession of the time. You know, and uh, being an economist, and um, that was a new brainer for me to also jump on board. You know, and it, it was really an interesting move. So um, I had a very good run. You know, I started my service immediately, and if after that, like most of the department wanted me to pay back, so I had to actually continue banking. So, um, and luckily for me, I had gone round the whole uh, um, desk from traditional operations, um, job uh, control and all of that. So, three years after down the line, and I worked with the best banks, really, honestly, so I had a very good foundation, uh, Fidelity Bank in Nigeria, and then um, did a um, Standard trust, which has metamorphosed to UBA today, so you have. So, and um, when I got into Treasury uh, five years down the line at Fidelity, they actually said to me, "You're going nowhere because you had the fire to make money for us, and which is what banking was all about." You know, because I had that passion that I needed to actually make a difference. So, I did that in my various uh, business, and it's been quite uh, interesting. But in the course of that, I came into the Africa space you know, when I was in UBA. Um, I did, um, I, I spent 17 years of this 24 years in UBA, by the way. Mm -hmm. So um, at UBA, um, I had the, um, that honor of having almost eight African countries. You know, I was managing the treasuries of eight African countries for like wow. in three years. And I walked out of Ghana, so I've been in Ghana since then. So, um, at that point, I something else started developing. I started having that goal to actually have an impact in the African economy because I was actually looking at uh, business development across all of these places, trying to get their treasury businesses on. I had to work with customers that had uh, put things across the um, uh, regions that they were countries where we were, and it was just a new brainer speaking on one thing that actually could actually be the act of them, the region, you know, for, for the African economies, and that was agriculture. So I fell in love with it, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm right today. Um, so it was when I wanted to uh, to leave uh, banking mm -hmm. in 
2019. I didn't leave because of any, I left because of the gap that existed because banks, of course, and I don't blame them because it was a very a big uh, challenge for banks to venture into agriculture and actually make the impact that they should make, you know, because they they can't leave the comfort of their office to actually get to the this thing to the um, field and see what is going to happen, you know, where their money is going to and all of that. It takes a lot, you know, and they the risk involved too. Um, I I had to actually bet this my company acted we are quick and it was all about looking at the I, I should call it the productive sectors of the economy and. Um, Number one on it was agriculture. Is agriculture, and um, that's that's why I'm doing agriculture now, with um, just enabling businesses across that. Wow, wow, that's like that is amazing. That was amazing. But I picked something from what she just said. I just want to ask the time that you said when you were done with school, you said banking was like a good move. Then at that time. Mm-hmm. Was there was there enough female representation in the banking sector? Oh well, we were there, but we were just down there, down the ladder. You know, even the banks fit. Uh, but the good thing I will tell you, like when I said I, I'm without any bias, I worked with the best banks. These these two banks were banks that looked at excellence more than anything, and that was I, I'm proud of them because. Towards at the later part of my career, I saw what it was. But at the time that you're speaking, like, women were really not in the play. Trust me, and and I I, I could really um, understand that because we were not stepping up to their responsibilities. So we could actually get to middle management and just get sold. Maybe you're having children and all of that. So your career just has, uh, kind of start fizzing away. But at some point, of course, I think we had to actually set it up, you know, to say being a mother can't stop me, all of that. But the good thing with the banks I worked with was they looked more at merits more than anything. So because you're, and I will tell you, I've seen that in my career to where women, because we take maybe pregnancy as a, um, as, um, as an ailment, even when God has given you all the um, the, the good health through yeah. the, this thing, people just pay, pay, uh, play through and see and all of that and just start looking at themselves as weak. And that's why at the end of the day, when you finish uh, giving birth, your male colleagues would have gone ahead of you. That's the point. I, I think most of the time that's what happens. But I tell you, this awareness actually started coming in the, in the 21st century, not when uh, I started banking, definitely. Wow. Okay. So now being, being a woman, have you faced any challenges? I mean, professionally? Okay. Um, I'll tell you the, 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 the thing is that you see it really um, in the, in, in the workspace, you see it because if you're an assertive person, if you're someone that actually gets ahead of your male counterpart, and then you speak very um, confidently, and you're very competent at what you do, some people will actually, uh, my, you, you need to, you'll get that eye. People will actually look at you, this woman, you don't know your place. But the issue is that the, 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 in the work environment, just show them that this is, really about work and nothing else. That's the point. So I I know I I got that. And most importantly, I tell you what I got because I'm a single mother. Um, I think the the worst bit was even more like being a single mother more than anything, more than being a woman itself. Because the, the, the fact that I was more into... I need to do my job, get my uh, budget and all of that. I was meeting all of those. So I wasn't really discriminated against, you know, because I was a woman. But I could see when people are not performing, what happens to them. You can easily be dropped if you're a woman because that's the weakness that people are waiting for you to show in the first place. So once you show that weakness, trust me, you're the first to drop on the on the list. 
you know. So I see, I, 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 I see that a lot, you know. Um, even in the works, wherever you are, you will always see that. So that happened a lot, you know. Um, today, when you're talking, even on a table, most of the time, you actually have that feel that people are looking and waiting for you to that sh show that weakness that you're a woman. But it's you that will know that this is a stereotype and you need to actually that we need to actually have that disruption where th this is and get people to think differently about how women should be. Because when we step up, trust me, we change things. I know that. I have seen it happen in my career, you know. And um, my treasury was uh, female-based. I had only two guys there, and we were like the best performance, you know. So it's really a matter of leadership and it's 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 for you to also show the other women what they need to do to actually make sure they step into those shoes in the kind of place where i was in fact at uba our representative the management uh, this thing was actually 50 percent women you know and it was nothing but merit on merit yeah. so I, I i've not felt that i experienced that because of the kind of environment I actually worked in, definitely. But it, it happens, I know. Yes. Well, since uh, I just mm -hmm. want to say for the final question that how, what and how would you advise women out there who probably find themselves in environments that frown upon women being in leadership positions or women competing in the spa same space as their male counterparts. How would you tell these women to actually overcome these challenges? Okay, you know, when we talk about um, women empowerment, I think more of a mental empowerment more than anything. And that's more psychological and it's all about self-determination, your competence, your impact, the value you're putting on the table and all of that. And I believe more that that will take you to where you want to be more than anything. Trust me. Nobody, like we say, we don't light a candle and put it under the bed. The bed yes. It will still show. Yeah. So if a woman is actually at her A game wherever she is, nobody can actually suppress you. And it's so unfortunate sometimes we actually, it's actually the, I guess this is a short time, it's actually really the the social, um, the, what we had growing up, the foundation we had growing up yes. that actually does it. So where you, in your head, they've given you that, this thing at home, that this is your place. So you get into an environment in a workplace and you start taking that same second citizenship position and that becomes where you're supposed to be, you know. But that's foundation and the fact that you are really self-aware that you're determined to actually make it, to compete regardless, you know, and be the best you can and have the impact, you know, actually helps you to, to be the best wherever you are. So it's really something that um, I, I, need, I need women to come up and, and step up to the plate and say, hey, if a man can do this, I, I cannot see myself. I knew when I was pregnant, what I said is that, God, I knew I had some uh, challenge at the point, um, work-wise, you know, when you talk about that. But I said to myself, as long as God gives me strength, I'm not going to take one sick leave out of this place. And I will show that I'll, my performance won't drop. And mm -hmm. to be honest, it was the best that I had. And from work, I went to the hospital and gave birth. And that's the point. People are waiting for you to actually say, oh, I can't do this. You know, but when you barring, you have a good health and whatever, you actually show people that pregnancy, I can still do what a man can do and, and still beat him at that. You know, you, you're in a good place. Is that the point? That, that is right. That, that's amazing. <laughs> That was like a lot. That was a lot. And I feel you you touched on one major point. That was like the upbringing in the society. How they yeah. were raised. I think the foundation plays a key role in that. So yeah. I'm really happy that you've actually mm -hmm. touched on it and mentioned it. Thank you so much for your time in Keiichi. We're really grateful. We'll stay in touch yeah. and we hope we can do more of such things. But thank you. Have a lovely day. 
Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you. You too. Uh, okay, bye. bye. Okay, uh, happy fun. Yeah, interesting uh, interaction right there with uh, Madame Nkechi. Um, uh, yeah, all the way from Nigeria. Uh, I believe that was very fruitful and, uh, you know, the, the, she, she made a lot of submissions right there. And uh, it, it, was, it was very, very enlightening to me, I would say. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's 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 uh, hear what Epi uh, has to say uh, after the interview. And trust me, uh, for me, I think she has really laid it out, and like uh, it, it gives a clear picture of the conversation where you say what uh, what what a man can do, a woman can do it and do it better, you know. And for me, it's 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 really all out for the women of the twenty first century, I would say. Yeah, I, I think one, one of the key points that resonated with me was the foundation. And mm -hmm. I'm happy you actually said what a man can do, a man can do better. Because yeah, I, yeah. in a way, I beg to differ. Really? I, I think I've stopped clinging onto that statement or holding into what a man really? can do. Because we're in a stage where we literally are moving past the time of what a man can do is mm. the standard to determine how well or how good or the worth or value of a woman. Mm. If a man can farm, uh -huh. And a woman can run a company. She doesn't need to come and farm to prove her worth. Or she doesn't need to come and farm and guess probably twice right. the harvest or the yield uh. to prove that she can do better or she is better. I think we should be at a place where we tend to value women for their worth. There's something that uh, one woman, I think you've mentioned her on this show before. She was the first, this is the first justice in Ghana, female justice. Yeah, first in Ghana. female justice in Ghana, yeah. What mm -hmm. she said was that it's about doing the job and doing a good job, but doing it as a woman, hmm. not as a man. Right. At times, we, we, we get lost in this race to actually overtake, pursue, and recover things. Mm -hmm. All in, so the, you, in you the hope of, you know, being in the light or the shadow of a man. Right. To prove to the man that we can mm. do. Yes, right. we can. We're up to the task. We are up to the task, whether you see it but or whether you, you do don't it your own see way. it. Is we should do it, it our way. Uh. We should do it how we do it. Right. And we should be recognized, respected, loved, and valued mm. for how we do it. If you want to go straight, good. If I want to go probably left or right and I still arrive at the same destination. Okay. I think everybody should be applauded for that. And that mentality where we tend to raise children, especially yeah. female children, to think that it's 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 more of, you know, all the schooling you're going is not really going to amount to so much. Okay. You, you have to come back. And I yeah. remember when I was in JHS, my grandmother used to say that the school the school is good, you know. She's not trying to trade it's like the school is good, mm. but you're a woman, so the kitchen is very important, it's equally more important. Right. So then it's like in a minute, and she keeps repeating it and pouncing it in your head every time. Mm. Every time. So you feel like, ah, well, then I could just do away with the books and probably not be that serious with it because nobody's going to come ahead of I'm not that serious with the books. Right. But then if you don't know how to do the house chores, mm. you don't know how to probably keep a home, how to cook, how to clean, yeah. then you're not fit to get married. And mm. we're, we're brought up to think that marriage is the ultimate line. Yeah. Look, if you're a woman and you don't get married, then you haven't attained or achieved anything. So then even if a woman has millions mm -hmm. or accumulated or been You're able to single. make an impact, yes, there has to be a man a attached man to her life, yeah. to make her complete. That mentality, that thought is something we need to erase. We're mm. actually ruining our daughters and their futures because then those who do not end up finding husbands or getting married uh. feel like they haven't made anything, yeah. feel like they don't amount to anything. The stereotyping. And the, yes, the they could actually and come in that. public and be, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. on their own, there's not that recognition, acceptance, and love from oh, the yeah. family yeah. just because of who you yeah. are. Mm. So I think it's she's she's really said a lot for me, and yeah. I feel this is yeah. uh, this is work that we need uh -huh. to do. We all speak about it, but how often do we really, in the moment, put it into practice? Mm. It's one thing to say about something you believe, but do you really believe in it? That in the moment you're actually working towards. And you know it? what I like. You know what I like sometimes. I mean, she made mention of the fact that she's a single mother. I mean, when she mentioned it, I was like, I saw your expression. But then, but the thing <laughs> is. You, you hardly hear a, a male figure say, I'm a single father. Hardly do you hear that. Because when, when, when maybe they, they separate from their, their spouse or their wives and everything, the potential of them getting another woman is high. So you get it. But with the women, they, they, they hold on to that, you know, seed they have, nurture it alongside, blend it with work, 
and engage themselves in other, you know, uh, profit yielding activities. So you realize that they are blending a lot and at the same time managing their home. And the, for me, that is excellence. That is total excellence. It's, we, we really need to you know, it's, give it's okay, a thumbs up. It's actually okay for, oh, she's dead or maybe your wife left. And, you know, you need to get and, a woman and, to look after and, the and child. Fr- and, I, and I always frown on a- any man or any person who looks down upon any woman who is a single mother. When they mention that, they'll be like, oh, forget her. She's a single Do mother. You know that, Do you know that not- thing? Can you be a single father? Because, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Like, you hardly hear anything like a single father. Even if they're there, he will always have a go-to person or one no, who is we see, preparing for, to get For them, it's actually so, easy for the family to say, oh, you need to get a woman to look after the child. And get you a woman. How, how many women do you hear? Exactly. You, you need a you know? man to... <laughs> You know, all of that. God. So, thank you very much, uh, Madam Inkechi uh, Akunyili, for joining us all the way from Nigeria and, you know, an accountant and, and uh, a banker and an agripreneur uh, as well. Trust me, it's amazing the things that she, she has done. And uh, we have a number of women across the continent in the diaspora doing same things. Kudos to all of you. And we will continue to celebrate you as far as uh, championing, as far as Africa Global Radio and its, you know, vision is concerned. <laughs>